It's so easy to fall in love with the actors of your favorite series. Some years ago, Drake Bell was the idol of girls and boys alike. He was cute, talented, and funny. Girls wanted to date him and boys wanted to be him. But then, something changed. It was not one, but rather a few signs that showed something was wrong with Drake. First, he was arrested with some DUI charges from 2010 to 2015. Then everyone started talking about why he hadn't been invited to Josh Peck's wedding, and a rumor started going around that they had been in a fight. Then, Drake started acting weird and and spending more and more time in Mexico. In 2020, things got worse, and one of Drake's ex-girlfriends spoke about his involvement in very serious crimes. And now, in 2021, Drake has just been arrested for child endangerment. So who is really Drake Bell if he's not the funny, cute, and adorable pop rock star we all love? Is he the monster everyone appears to believe he is? Keep watching if you want to know. On June 4, 2021, Drake was arrested in Ohio, and he was charged with crimes against under 18. There was one count of attempted child endangerment against him, and one of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. In other words, Drake established inappropriate communication with a young person for months, and after that, in one of his concerts, he somehow violated his duty of care with a girl. Duty of care is a moral or legal obligation that all people have to ensure the safety or well-being of others. By violating his duty of care, Drake created a risk for the girl. There are no details of exactly what happened between them, but we know that these things Drake is being blamed for happened in 2017. At that time, Drake was 31 years old and the girl was a teenager. The mere fact that the girl was literally half of Drake's age is alarming. Drake has no business at all saying inappropriate things to a girl so young when he already was a grown-up man, and even less so putting her well-being at risk. Drake pleaded not guilty to the charges and was let go after he paid a bond of $2,500. He agreed to provide a DNA sample and to have no contact with the girl. Only five days after paying his bond, Drake showed off on social media that he was in Mexico City, and he even tweeted in Spanish wondering if someone knew anyone that could tattoo him. So Drake appears to not be taking the situation in all of its seriousness, and it may be because this is not the first time that he's been signaled for having really twisted behaviors toward underage girls. In fact, in August 2020, one of Drake's ex-girlfriends, Melissa, exposed him for a series of terrible things he he did that left a mark on her forever. In August 2020, Melissa Lingefeld, known as Jimmy Ono online, shared some TikToks that became viral. There, she told her story about how Drake, whom she dated from 2006 to 2009, had been very evil towards her. When she and Drake started dating, Melissa was 16 years old and he was 20. Melissa moved in with him soon after their relationship started. She was dating the dream guy. Drake was one of the most successful teen icons of the time. He was funny, talented, and handsome. But sadly, their relationship was not nearly as perfect as anyone would have thought it was. Things started to become really bad after one year of moving in together. According to Melissa, at that time, Drake started to mistreat her. And when I say verbal, imagine the worst type of verbal you could ever imagine, and that was what I got. The fact that someone mistreats their partner verbally is already bad enough, but things became much worse for Melissa. According to her, Drake's bad behavior turned physical. He apparently hit Melissa and threw her around. At the worst moment of their relationship, Drake dragged Melissa down the stairs of their home as her face hit every step on the way down. Years after all that happened, Melissa used her TikToks to share the details of the dark place she was in while she dated Drake. But she also shared something very concerning. Drake had also hurt other women, even more vulnerable than her. I don't even want to get into the underage girls thing. As soon as she said that, Melissa admitted that she was scared of speaking of what she knew, but she was also aware that her testimony would help others. And that's exactly what happened. Other girls soon started feeling less alone, and they reached out to Melissa to tell her about their own experiences with Drake. Melissa took the chance and asked them for permission to share their testimonies on her TikTok. All of the experiences Melissa shared are deeply disturbing and disgusting. Two women said that they knew Drake had been with teens while he was an adult and while he was still dating Melissa. Melissa also got a message from another one of Drake's ex-girlfriends, Hayden Lane. Hayden wrote to Melissa and told her that she was Drake's girlfriend for five years after Melissa and he broke up. Hayden expressed her support to Melissa and wrote, I will stand by your side and back you up as I went through the same horrific verbal, physical, and mental 
Melissa shared more screenshots of her conversation with Peyton, where Peyton also says that she was scared of sharing the information. She felt sick to her stomach and was shaking. As they exchanged their experiences with Drake, Melissa revealed that there was one time that Drake, while he was drunk, called Melissa's mother and referred to Melissa using terrible words that nobody should ever be called. As if that wasn't enough, both women say that they're aware that Drake had encounters with hundreds of young girls. So the list keeps going. Melissa shared another story on a TikTok of a girl who made a Twitter thread explaining how Drake had asked her friend and her for revealing pictures when he was 25 and they were 14. Can you imagine that? A 25 year old asking for pictures of two girls more than 10 years younger than him? They were literally children. And the fact that this famous person used the admiration they felt for him to ask for private pictures is just so twisted and wrong. Melissa also shared a police report from 2009, nine months after her breakup with Drake. According to the report, Drake had threatened Melissa and another person telling them over the phone, I'm going to kill both of you and stab you. Obviously, Melissa and the other person Drake threatened were scared for their safety. Ugh, I don't know about you guys, but I can't imagine how painful it must have been that the person you once loved tells you something like this. Melissa then shared another email that Peyton had sent to Drake, and that one was the most heartbreaking thing she had posted. There, Peyton tells Drake that she's in agony without him and that she misses the part of Drake with whom she fell in love. She missed watching TV with him, cuddling, going to Disneyland. Sadly, that Drake was the same one that slept with another woman while they were engaged, and that was verbally aggressive to her. That's the scariest part of people like Drake, that they were sweet, charming, and loving at times, and some other times they make your life a living hell, as Drake did to all of these girls. Also, keep in mind that while these things are happening, Drake was still working regularly, doing films and TV series. He was constantly surrounded by other girls who were potentially vulnerable to him. That's scary. After Melissa shared her TikToks with all of these stories, Drake Bell spoke out, and as it was to be expected, he denied everything Melissa had said. Through a representative, Drake told Variety, I never abused my ex-girlfriend or did so many of the other things Melissa falsely claimed on her TikTok video. As our relationship ended more than a decade ago, we unfortunately both called each other terrible names as often happens when couples are breaking up. Then Drake went on to say that in 2019, Melissa still felt close enough to him to reach out and ask him for money and that he had given it to her. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think that sharing that Melissa was struggling financially and that she asked him for money was so unnecessary on Drake's part. Was he trying to humiliate her? What point did he want to make? Anyways, Drake then said that he doesn't know if Melissa's behavior is a misguided quest for more money or attention. And he finished by saying that he is seeking to take legal actions to defend himself against the accusations. I'm not sure if it was a smart move on his part to call Melissa attention seeking or claiming that she only wants money. Yeah, he's obviously going to want to defend himself, but attacking Melissa only makes him look so much worse. Most people supported Melissa, but some others fiercely started defending Drake and claiming that Melissa has no proof against Drake apart from her TikToks. Other people think that if what Melissa says is actually true, she should have gone to the authorities. One Twitter user said, why do people try to cancel people on TikTok? I feel like that's not the way. If I could sue my ex and had the evidence, I'd take that to court. However, other users think that women who have been mistreated have already gone through enough and they should speak out under their own terms and when they're prepared. After Melissa's TikToks were posted in August 2020, people were talking about what Drake had done for a while, but then a few months passed and things started to cool down. Then Drake did something that made most people forget about the crimes he had been blamed for. He made the headlines again in November 2020 and the reason was weird. All right, I know this is gonna sound like an ending to a bad movie, but on November 2020, Drake changed his name to Drake Campaña, moved to Mexico and started making music in Spanish. <laughs> When first started tweeting about relocating to Mexico, people took it very lightly. They made memes about it and said that Drake's weird attitude was just another of the many strange things happening in 2020. Everyone was also talking about how Drake's music has always been well received in the Spanish speaking market. But some other people on the internet were still thinking about Melissa and they think that Drake was just scared of the accusations against him. Maybe Drake feared that more women would come forward and blame him for other things. Moving to Mexico, where he does have a big following, would be just another way of Drake to escape the consequences of his actions. 
emotions and continue to do what he likes. So Drake moved to Mexico, where he feels safe and loved. But as you know, he couldn't quite escape justice. When he was arrested in June 2021, Drake was in Ohio, but only five days after being released, he went back to Mexico City. On June 9th, Drake tweeted in Spanish wondering if anyone knew someone that could tattoo him, and the people who were aware of the claims made against him didn't hesitate to troll him in the replies of his tweet. They told him things like, you can get your tattoo done in jail, or do you want to look tougher in jail? A day later, Drake shared a picture of himself getting tattooed on his Insta stories. The tattoo shows a man with a bruised eye and boxing gloves and the text, can't keep me down. We don't know what will happen to Drake Bell now that he pleaded not guilty. He still needs to attend a pretrial hearing in court that will determine the legal consequences of his actions. So I have the feeling that we'll be hearing from him soon. What do you guys think about the situation with Drake Bell? Or shall we say Drake Campagna is in? Let me know in the comments below.